Wow, it turns out the, the tokens were actually uh, pretty easy to put on the board. Yeah, yeah. Whoa, were you guys playing Catan? Yeah. yeah. Oh, awesome. Well, do you want to play a board game with me, like a three-player game? I've got Risk. <sighs> we, we only play 3D yeah. board games. Well, I know what I've got to do. Got any brick? Oh, wait. Uh, I kind of need both of your help. All right. Oh, come on. My sheep! You had a sheep! <laughs> All right, so this is Risk. It's a classic strategy game, and it has a really cool world map in it. Oh, boy, I, I really love that Southeast Asia doesn't have other countries in it. Well, it's basically broken up into regions. And what I'm thinking we could do is effectively turn this into a proper topographical map, put the little climates in there. As long as we leave enough space for armies and uh, make sure we have these really clear territory dividing lines, mm -hmm. I think we'll be good. Now there's six territories mm -hmm. and there's three of us. Mm -hmm. So that means two each. I want bloody Australia. I'll have Africa. Cool, I'll take South America. I would, I guess just for sake of ease, I'll you you want North take, America? Yeah. Oh, Europe. You just want me to do the big one. I get it. Yeah, you know you, what? You picked the smallest one. I think <laughs> what works really well is this just means we can work once, like we yeah. actually yeah. just can work on strips of the board. We literally get a third each. Beautiful. All right. Well, that's the plan. That's the territories. This is being edited down from two minutes to about 30 seconds somehow. Uh, Let's <laughs> make a freaking game. So we had a big, beautiful project ahead of us, and it was time for all of us to settle down and paint our respective continents. And each of us had a different style. I thought my best idea would be to mix a whole bunch of different texture pigments and pastes to establish the topography, but also the basic colors of each of the continent areas I was working on first. But, as I said, everyone had a different way of going about it. I followed a similar but different approach for my continents. Instead, I didn't care too much about the colours because I knew I'd be painting these in later, but decided to use a lot of texture paint to create a lot of mountains and hills to start off with. I made sure that the continents looked nice and textured up, and then I moved on to painting them up. But what about you, Murray? I didn't care about colour at all. I just grabbed the brown texture paint and went ham. As you can see, I've already finished all mine, and I'm going to paint them later. So when I was working on building my terrain up, one of the things I really wanted to work on was having verticality to make the board look exciting. So for these mountain ranges, I mixed concrete pigment with texture paste, which is a really quick drying modeling paste that will keep these nice stiff peaks, allowing me to use other modeling textures such as Astra Granite Debris and Games Workshop products to have a low lens with this paste building up the highlands. I had a pretty simple concept on how I was going to paint my little figures. I was just going to do a top light down light color. I was going to start with a nice blue and then just blast them with red and I get a nice bounce from that. The quality of the sculpts is so low. The guns merge into the torsos and all the pieces kind of become an indistinguishable blob. So I definitely think this approach of just uplifting the uh, colors of the plastic pieces, making them look a little bit higher quality than cheap plastic is the right way to go. Yeah, basically gone for a bit of a zenithal so we get some of the detail on them. I have a prototype I'm going to pitch to the gang because basically we have this cool risk board. I'm seeing that the, 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 the topology, topography, the mountains start to take shape and I can't help but wonder what they're going to do with the ocean. So I have a pitch. I've taken this, this uh, piece of board for my uh, was basically the same thickness and material as the, the risk map. Using a Dremel with like a, a words. plunge router fitting and a really sharp point, basically traced around the outside. Now look, it's a bit ugly, but I'm thinking if they can cut the countries out and put a sheet of acrylic with a bit of a stain with uh, alcohol ink, and then your countries go on top. And as you can see, I've just put a bit of glue, a bit of sand over there. The idea is in theory, add a bit of depth for the ocean and a little bit more height for the countries, or it might ruin their whole project. Let's see what happens. I'm really scared. I'm glad that you're doing that part, not me. This could be the point that the whole project literally is just ruined. Well, I'll leave you to it.
So Jazza came in and raised the stakes as he always does. And it was time to elevate this. And if we were going to elevate this, and by that I mean literally create some elevation and three dimensionality to it, I wanted to go even further. So I had the idea of actually mounting this risk board on a frame. So you can hang up the risk as a gorgeous three dimensional world map that we can then pull off the wall and play games on, which I think is really ambitious. Yeah, that does make it a nice display piece, but also solves the issue of the fact that you can't fold up the map anymore. And to create this three dimensional vibe, I was handed a Dremel and given the task of Dremeling out all of these continents. Now I have to confess at this stage, we are very much in uh, crazy YouTuber idea territory. If you were to do this at home, I'd strongly recommend just getting a poster and making the continents on your own or cutting them out. There is almost zero reason why you would Dremel the continents out of a risk board. It was very time consuming. It was very silly, but um, hey, you clicked on this video. Yes, we are silly, and this is how we do. You could say it was risky business. Oh, thanks for the pun, Jen. Appreciate that. You're supposed to wait till the end. So Jen just went and got a new bit for the Dremel. This was the previous one. I don't know if it's going to focus on it. There we go. This now cuts uh, <laughs> about four times faster. So hopefully what was proving to be a really difficult job will be a bit easier. Although I notice the faster it goes, it leaves less of a clean trim. It was almost burning its way through before, which left a trendy trim that was <laughs> whatever, <laughs> whatever. All right, so we've cut the board out and I'm gonna do something that may be brilliant and it may be stupid. Jen, what do you think? We're gonna set it on fire. Do you like the idea? Um, no, because we put a lot of hard work into this. Please don't, don't. So what I'm actually trying to do is just obviously being careful not to actually set it on fire, but there's a lot of these wispies, getting rid of them with flame. Also because the Dremel, the heat from the Dremel has actually scorched and burnt the corners and they look really good. So there's some areas where it's really rough, like right here is really rough. And I reckon I have a vibe, a feeling that if I get the lighter in there and kind of torch that a little bit and then like rub off those excess flakes, it might look better. And I think it does. Jen, what exactly are you insisting on doing? I want to do the peely. Oh no. It's a bit, it's not as good as the, the other ones, but still pretty good. Now that all of the continents had been cut out, it was time to glue this bad boy down. And it was going to take a little bit of precision work to make sure it sat center of the frame. So we measured it up, drew a couple of lines and glued it down with some super glue. That's it. Making sure that this was lined up perfectly was really important for our sort of, you know, sensibilities. This was going to be mounted on the wall. It needs to look like a work of art. It needs to look like a map mounted and pinned deliberately on the wall. And uh, the only way that was going to happen is if we got it absolutely perfect. I said about working on Australia. I wanted to show off my homeland, the sunburnt country, and I really wanted to use it as a springboard to get me excited about working on these continents. I tried to go for a slightly exaggerated version of Australia with a really sunburnt desert, focusing on Martian Iron Earth, which is a crackle paint to give the fun texture of the cracked Australian desert, obviously uh, not to scale. used multiple different flocks with slightly varying textures and colors to build up a forested identity. Remembering that the game Risk is set around the turn of the last century, it isn't meant to represent modern industrial earth, so the world is just a little bit greener than it is today. For the island regions such as Japan and Papua New Guinea and Indonesia, most of these islands are basically built upon quite a solid ridge of mountains that runs along the center of them. But for Japan in particular, I wanted to make sure Fujisan was evident, so I made sure to grab a big blob of the texture paste and worked on the iconic Mount Fuji first of all. Once I was happy 
happy with how tall my mountains were looking, it was time to clean up some of these edges. Now, as Dave mentioned before, they got a little bit singed on the way through, so I wanted to just make sure these layers of paper were nice and stuck together. So the first thing I did was lay down some initial colors with some base paint. This included some greens and yellows, just so I could give the continents a little bit of color. Once this was done, I went over the top with a couple of different texture paints, depending on what kind of climate it was in that region. For example, in Greenland, it appeared to be very icy and snowy, so I made sure to cover most of this continent in snow. In South America, I definitely wanted to include some of the rainforest that they have there, so I built up the textures using different types of flock and building up to a thicker flock to represent trees or the thicker forests. Once I was happy with how my flock was looking, I went around the bases of each of my continents in the color that represented in the Risk game. So for example, on Greenland, I trimmed it with a yellow color. Europe is lovely and green, and so kind of a little bit easy for me, but I'm gonna try and put as much interest into it as possible. Instead of using flocks for your snow, you actually painted it on and it came out really well, Mari, I'm jealous. Yeah, I just sort of wasn't thinking about it. I just went through it. I was like, yeah, yes, I would shade ice with a blue and then I'd stipple white on top of it. And then you asked me, why didn't I use ice technical paint? And I thought, that would have been pretty good. I love the way your ice looks. And altogether, I think the best of both worlds would have been the way to go. While we were busy painting continents, we had to do something to stop you being able to see the cardboard backing directly from the different viewing angles of this painting. So Jen, what's the solution? I found a couple of these bases that we had lying around. I stuck these on the board and thought this could work pretty well. You're just using Warhammer bases as spaces. Yeah, exactly. Cool, spacing marines. With that done and our agreement to use a acrylic ink tinted water ripple effect, we glued on the continents, mixed it up and spread it all over. But we cannot simply end on that without a nice music montage of us doing it. As always, this video would not have been possible without the support of our patrons. Thank you so much for all that you do. And we really hope you're enjoying being there with us on our private mini club discord, enjoying our mini review. And of course, our behind the scenes nonsense over on Patreon. If you'd like to support us or get in on some of that fun, some of that community action, look for the link in the description below. Don't forget to subscribe and like this video. And if you have a suggestion for another board game we should turn 3D, let us know in the comments below. All right, let's travel into the future and see what we have to say in the outro. So I have come here ready to show off my piece of art. Well, our piece of art. Workers of the world, unite. Murray has jet set it off on a holiday and Jen hasn't seen the finished product. Jen. Hello. So you ready to see the fruits of our creation? I sure am. Oh God. Whoa. This looks amazing. Thank you. I love this. You did it really just like as much, if not more of it than me. I like the giant head. Nice. Are you ready? We'll get the thumbnail shot while we're right here. Yeah, the, nice. The joke is we always, we always put a paintbrush in the thumbnail with a hand holding it. Should mm -hmm. we see what everyone else at the studio thinks? Yeah, let's do it. Do you want to go get someone? Sure. Caroline, Dave. one of the amazing editors at the studio. I have finally felt that we have ascended to become artists. We have an easel and everything. Gaze upon our risk board. Okay. Oh, dude, that's cool. You guys have done so well. I would very much like yeah. to touch yeah, yeah, it. This is a snowy. 
Yes. Yeah. That is, oh, that's really well done. Yay! <laughs> are we artists? You are artists. Yeah. Ah! Liam, what's your official job title? It's a great question. Junior editor? Know. Medium editor? Medium rare editor? I don't know. Welcome! Hello. This is our secret guest, Liam. That's amazing. Would you play it? I would, but I'd also be like, I can't touch this. It's too pretty. How heavy is it? It's pretty heavy, actually. It's pretty for, heavy. for a risk board. Oh, that's all right. All right, Thank last you so of all, much. Thank you. we have tabletop times artist, insert art artist, Alicia. Risk is your life. That was a this is your life reference. Oh my god! I love the waves, like the water. Oh my god, that is really cool. Have you guys tried playing on it yet? No, no we no, haven't, but we not... should. As the resident artist, yes. is this art? Um, yes, I, I pronounce it art. Yeah. <laughs> Good job. I dubbed you are now, the art. <laughs> you are now an artist. Yes! Thanks. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Uh, we've been Tabletop Time, you've been viewers, get out of here. That's it, I don't know, that's it. Great. This All video right, wasn't done. sponsored, I don't know what the f I'm doing, I'm not a professional. Thank you, bye. Bye.